Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's been such a lovely evening, and uh, we are entering into the holiday season, so I thought it would be appropriate to end the night with a, uh, a, a tale of Christmas cheer. Um, this is something that happened when I was seven years old, and my older brother John was nine, and we came home from school on Christmas Eve. We had a half day, and we were greeted by my mother, who was in an utter panic and she demanded that we get into the car immediately so that we could go out and buy a pinata. For context, I should mention that my mother was severely mentally ill. Uh, she had borderline personality disorder and she got these whims occasionally. Uh, when you're a kid, you don't know what borderline personality disorder is. You're just like, wow, mommy's fun, until she's not. This particular year, she was convinced that we had to get a pinata. It's Christmas, you have to get a pinata. Never did she mention this before, never did she mention this afterwards. But anyway, I'm seven years old. Pinata, when you're seven years old, that's heaven. I'm just like, pinata, pinata, pinata. So we piled into the car and we drove around for a while. I don't know if any of you have ever tried to purchase a pinata in December in suburban Massachusetts. Uh, not really a big Mexi culture. But uh, we, went to, we went to Sears, we went to Kmart, we went to Lechmere, RIP. And finally, somebody at one of these department stores pulled out some dusty Cinco de Mayo donkey piece of shit from the basement. And my mother was like, yeah, all right. And, and my brother's like, mom, that's, that's a donkey. And she was like, it's a reindeer. And we were like, but mom, it's purple and green and yellow. It's a Mexican reindeer, Feliz Navidad. So. I didn't care. We brought home the pinata. I was totally excited. I was just like, mommy, mommy, I want to do the pinata, 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 pinata. She's like, no, you have to wait until your father gets home, which I knew was going to ruin everything. My father, who is a lovely man, and I don't say that just because it's possible he's watching right now. Uh, he's, mellowed a lot, he's mellowed out quite a bit over the years, but at the time, my father would come home from work every day at about 6.30, just filled to the brim with Irish Catholic impotent rage. Uh, like, my, my dad was big about swearing through his teeth. I don't know if you want to, because he was not allowed to swear in the house. It would just be like, fur, fur, like all the time. <laughs> Until I was 14, I thought my dad's jaw was wired shut. It was just like, fur, fur, like all the time. And so he came home from work, and we were just like, Daddy, Daddy, pinata, pinata. And he's like, fur, fur, no, no pinata. We have to go buy a Christmas tree. We had a pinata, we had no Christmas tree because we had a tradition in my family uh, by which you would only buy a Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. That was the Finnegan family tradition. And then as I got older, I discovered that where we lived, Christmas trees went 50% on sale on Christmas Eve. So it was not so much a tradition as a cost-saving measure. Uh, so I got back in the car with my dad and we drove around for an hour trying to find anybody who had a tree left over Every year, our Christmas tree was like a Charlie Brown special, just some scoliosis-looking piece of shit that we would drag home. And then my dad would spend the next hour trying to mount the tree. You younger people, you have no idea how good you have it because tree stand technology <laughs> has advanced leaps and bounds over the years. When I was a child, you may remember, we had to impale the tree onto a spike. You had to like ram it onto a spike which was weird for Catholics, but we did. We rammed the tree <laughs> onto the spike, and then you had to drill screws into the side of it as if it was Frankenstein's monster. And my dad could never make it work. Mechanics, not our thing in the family. And eventually he would give up and, and put a screw into the back of the wall and use twine to tie to the tree so it would lean forward slightly. <laughs> like if you were to hit the tree, it would swing like a pendulum slightly. slightly. And now, of course, it is time to dress the Christmas tree. And uh, this is where younger people miss out because uh, when I was a child, it was the golden age of tinsel. Oh, tinsel. The trashiest of all holiday decorations. One of those little thin strips of metallic paper. Oh, did I love me some tinsel. I would just throw gobs and gobs of tin foil onto the tree. And my dad would be like, one strand at a time. One strand at a time. No, fuck that, no. I would not stop putting tinsel on the Christmas tree until the thing looked like it had been like gangbanged by cyborgs. I would just keep throwing gobs until it was a sheen of metal. Can't stop, won't stop. So 
Eventually, we finished tinseling the tree, and then we sat down, and we had our angry dinner. And then, now it's about 8.30, 9 o'clock. You think, oh, this is the time where the Finnegan family settles in and has a nice Christmas Eve. Wrong. Wrong. Because we were Catholics. Do you know what that means? Midnight Mass. Yes. I don't know if you know this. When you are Catholic on Christmas Eve, you are forced to go to church at midnight on Christmas Eve. Because when you're a Catholic, nothing can ever be purely enjoyable. <laughs> Everything nice must be mixed with something shitty so that you never forget that you do not deserve joy. So, also, my uncle was a priest, so we had to drive all the way into downtown Boston like it was this fucking gig. And so, we piled into the car, we drove an hour into Boston, we went to Midnight Mass, got home around 2.15, 2.30, and my dad's just like, go to bed, Santa's gonna be here soon. So wait, you're telling me Santa's gonna be here soon and you want me to go to bed? What are you, high? Like, no. And so immediately I was just like, oh, piñata, 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 piñata. And my dad's like, fucking fair. And at this point, we were inconsolable. We had to do the piñata. But he did not want to take the time to actually attach the piñata to the ceiling. So instead, he tried to sort of like, as a shortcut, he took off his belt. And he strung the piñata onto his belt. And then he and my mother stood about six feet apart holding ends of the belt with the piñata dangling in the middle. And then they, they, they put a blindfold on my brother John and gave him a wiffle ball bat. Some of you may have a sense of where this is going. For the record, my, my brother John was uh, not an athlete. Uh, very active in the school's Dungeons and Dragons community. More, more of a sword kid than a bat kid. But he did his best. They gave him the wiffle ball bat, and, and, and he took a big swing. And I can still hear, remember, I don't know if you remember wiffle ball bats. They would make that sound when you swung, that little hole in the end. To, and I remember hearing it whistle through the air, and he missed the pinata entirely. And he hit my mother right in the um, teacher bulge. <laughs> Do you know what a teacher bulge is? You might, have, you might know it as a, as a fupa, uh, fat upper pussy area. Um, I've also heard it called a gunt. Um, I did not make up those words. Those are words that other people have used. I'm not taking credit or blame for Fupa and Gunt. We were, much, we were much more innocent. We called it a teacher bulge because all of our teachers in school would have their polyester pants and they would go up to the rib cage and then there'd be that little brrr, like that little brrr, and we called that a teacher bulge. For the record, I am not trying to body shame anyone here, okay? Men's bodies are just as disgusting as women's. They're just different. Women have teacher bulges and men have front butts. But um, anyway, so my brother, he missed the pinata and he nailed my, my mother right in the fupa. And then she buckled over and started screaming, my ovaries, my ovaries. And she collapsed onto the ground. And then my dad immediately stood over like, fucking fuck, fuck. And then John started going to town on the pinata, which was now laying on the floor. So my most cherished holiday memory is of my mother in the fetal position with my father swearing at her and my brother beating the shit out of a paper mache donkey that then split open and there was nothing inside so my mom didn't put candy in it. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Thank you guys so much. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Oh, my God. Christian Finnegan, everyone.